planned on having my full-term pregnancy and coming home with our bouncing baby boy and everything was gonna be great. When you have a kid, you think everything's gonna be perfect and you know, nine months later, here comes a bundle of joy and everything's gonna be wonderful. So that wasn't the case. 26 weeks into my pregnancy, I'd been having some problems just with nausea, not feeling well. She had told me, I'm gonna go see the doctor today. They were busy that day, so had to have me wait in the waiting room for a while and wasn't really overly concerned, just had needed some fluids. I was really nauseous, couldn't keep anything down. So they finally get me in a room and 10 minutes later, next thing I know, it's, it's just a flurry of activity and they're like, it looks like you're gonna have your baby early, you're gonna have to go to Denver and it just came out of left field. I had no idea what was going on. It was very frightening. They tell me that essentially what they were going to try to do was juggle keeping her from having huge health issues and you know potential failure of major organs, things like that, but also keep Hunter inside. That was a Friday and, and by Monday um, they said I was going to be ready to have my baby at 27 weeks. All of a sudden it happens. I look over the shroud that they have and they pull him out and I remember thinking like that's all of him. That's that's as big as he is. And then thinking well maybe he's not that small until I really saw him and they let me cut his umbilical cord and literally, like the scissors that we used were almost as big as he was. He was just tiny. He was one pound, 12 and a half ounces. You know when I woke up I thought I want to go see my baby. I want to go hold my baby and they're like you're not going to be holding him for a while and you're going to probably be here until your original due date you know, three and a half months later. They kind of gradually work you into what is exactly happening, how big he is. Start talking about survival rates. We're thinking, how is this going to end? You know, I mean, it was just so terrifying all the time. Days went by and I still wasn't able to hold him. And the first time I really got to see him was a, a Polaroid picture that the nurses had taken in the NICU and brought me while I was in my bed. The first couple days they were telling me, he's doing great, he's, you know, he's really doing well. And then I think it was about the third day into it, he just crashed. His lungs gave out and they were having to put him in this extra little tent and just all kinds of things that a little tiny baby shouldn't have to endure. Just to hold him for the first time, it's not like you grab them and you hold them. There's all these wires. That's one thing I, I'll never forget is all the cables that were attached to them. Initially, the NICU was incredibly frightening because it's so foreign and it's not what you'd planned on. As much as I wanted to bring them home, that was the best place for him to be, to have access to the latest medicines and the top-notch equipment and technology. And they have a small NICU here in the mountains. It's nothing like what they have in Denver. And there were other families from other rural towns nearby and even from other states. Every minute of the time we spent there is, has come to the road where we are now that he's strong, happy, healthy little boy. You know, with the March of Dimes, the great thing is how they help provide the training for the nurses and the staff. I feel it's critical uh, to continue to help providing funding to the March of Dimes for a number of different reasons. We never expected this to happen, never in a million years. The hope is that through getting this funding, that financially maybe we can find a cure with the March of Dimes for premature births so that we don't have to deal with it all. And that would be a great accomplishment. And there's constant work being done to, to prevent this from happening to another family, that hopefully in five years there'll be you know, another drug that might help send them home sooner. The hope is to have advancements in this so that years from now, there's this issue, we know how to fix it this way. And it's possible. I mean, it's already being proven right now that the March of Dimes works simply based on my son, because without the care that he was given and the training that the doctors and the nurses have, he would not have made it. We're just very blessed to be on the receiving end of the March of Dimes research and having access to the NICU and all of the medicines that they have come up with, the surfactant that Hunter received. I know that it saved my son's life. Had he not had this drug, he probably wouldn't have made it. Somebody you know will be touched by this in your life and somebody you know will struggle and you want to be able to support them somehow. And, and the March of Dimes can help you help them if you, you give to the March of Dimes and help support. Hunter today, I think in, in our darkest hours, 
in the NICU wouldn't have have thought that he's and such an amazing little boy. My name is Hunter, and my birthday is in December 19th, and my favorite thing to do is skateboard and drop in. Having now been on the receiving end of so many good things that happened in the NICU, um, he is a wild, fun, healthy young man. Started first grade this year, and he kayaks with his dad on whitewater. He paddle boards, he races BMX, and he just has a zest for life. He's as sweet as they come, and as funny, and as caring as any kid. But just such a gentleman, and, and such a good boy, and such a carer, but at the same time, I mean, he gets after it. It can get dark sometimes, but there's a whole organization behind us that, that's ready and willing to get that money to research and help us along and bring those babies up happy and healthy.